All right, so this class is essentially just like a quick rundown of everything available um, to the agents. Okay, we got someone else. Kind of pause for a few seconds and let them get on. Hello. Hi, Janice. All right, so this class um, is essentially the basics of what we have available here at the office, um, the things I recommend using. We won't go into a ton of detail on like the how to, um, just because there's so many options, but I like to use it as, especially for new agents, the starting place that you bounce off of, right? So it's like, these are all of my options. There's so many, it's a little overwhelming. How do, what do I like? what fits um, who I am as a person, um, because maybe you don't like to send postcards and you'd rather do a little pop by and show up at their house with a gift. You know, it all depends on who you are as an agent. So I just wanna present essentially all of your options and do my recommendations for the ones you should start with or definitely get um, going. And then you can kind of pick and choose based off of your agent, agent personality. Um, I know Angelica, you're with like a team. So you have to think of all of your agents' personalities. Um, so we're just gonna kind of go through it all. And then that's when, if we have a one-on-one, -on -one, you can say, okay, I'm thinking of this, this, and this, how do I implement it? And I have like other short videos on like the actual nitty gritty of like, click this, do this. Um, but I just wanna show you all of the options. So I'm gonna share my screen here. There we go. Okay, so I just wanna start off always on the Talkify calendar. Um, if you haven't saved this URL yet, save it. Um, it's talkify.com forward slash KWSR calendar monthly. Um, and so this essentially goes through all of the events that we have going on, all of the trainings, because, you know, I do these trainings every other Tuesday and it's kind of the basics courses, but we do have more advanced topics sometimes. For example, um, this Tuesday or Thursday, um, Haley's doing a finding inventory and taking market share webinar, big class. So these are things you're gonna wanna keep in mind because you know, you're gonna develop marketing ideas from these topics and things like that. At the team meeting on the 16th of February, I will also be teaching kind of the foundational like marketing roadmap. So that kind of leans into this class a lot. So consider joining, it will be recorded. So I have that, but I always like to focus on this. You can click subscribe here in the upper right to make sure that it connects with your Google calendar and all the trainings up here and you can toggle them on and off so you don't see them all the time. But that way you'll never miss a training that's going on. So just flagging that um, here to begin with. Um, but now to kind of get into the nitty gritty of the marketing things you have available in command. Now command is Keller Williams, um, you know, overarching platform. It's where you're gonna put in your opportunities for your transactions. Um, all of your CRM, essentially contact data lives here. So I want to have you guys use command at a high level for marketing as well. So the first thing I always like to flag is the smart plans tab. So this is the fourth from the top. And essentially, if you've never used this before, this first page will be empty. I'll say this, like you have no smart plans. Um, you'll see mine will update here. I have a lot um, as I test and build um, the ones that I think will work best for you guys. But essentially, smart plans are automated plans that can fire out mass emails for you one after another, um, send text messages for you if you set that up. Um, and again, mass text messages. So you could text your whole database, Merry Christmas or Happy Easter, whatever's holidays coming up. Um, 
you can also set up smart plans to remind you to call people. So, you know, a quarterly call plan, it will literally remind you on the day where it's like, oh, make sure you call this person. And you can always go back through your tasks for that day and literally see what you need to do. So I really like using smart plans to automate my touches to my clients or to my database. Um, I know on last week's class, I said, you should start with at least 300 contacts in your database, because I'm sure you have at least 300 contacts in your phone right here. So literally add them over, and then we can start making sure we're nurturing them, whether or not they are leads, like ready to buy or sell. I want to show up on, in their world. And smart plans are a great way to do that. Essentially, so this goes back to that Millionaire Real Estate Agent book written by Gary Keller. So if you haven't had the opportunity to read that yet, um, definitely pick up a copy because it's going to essentially align with everything I'm teaching here. But Gary suggests to have at least 35 touches on everyone in your database. So this is leads, family and friends, people who aren't even thinking about selling yet. They're just your whole entire sphere of influence, your whole database, right? And touching them 35 times a year. Now that can seem super daunting as a new agent, which is why I've created smart plans to make it easy, right? So I'm going to toggle over from the My Smart Plan. So again, any smart plan I've created or I've saved lives here over to the library tab. So there are like thousands and thousands of smart plans in this library. They've been created by agents from all over the world or um, like from these red bubbles, actually from Keller Williams International, which I find to be some of the most valuable, right? Um, for example, you know, that quarterly call plan I was talking about, you can literally download this and add it to your people to make sure you call them once a quarter. Um, but because we're talking about that 35 touch, I wanted to point out the smart plans that I recommend. Again, we're not gonna go into a ton of detail on um, how they all work and that sort of thing. But the first, if you search up in the search bar here, it's the monthly neighborhood nurture from Keller Williams International. So you'll see that little red bubble down there. This is one of the most valuable smart plans. And literally once you start a contact on this smart plan, it will go every month, it will fire, and you don't have to do another thing, right? Until, well, until the person like unsubscribes from it. But it's so valuable that I don't see a lot of unsubscribe rates on this. So essentially this is going to take the physical address of your contact, or a neighborhood. So again, why I say adding all the details to your contact is super important because um, that will allow me to send this neighborhood nurture smart plan. So we're gonna need to add a neighborhood or multiple neighborhoods to every person in your database. But then when you put them on the smart plan, every month they will get an email about the properties that are active in their neighborhood. So they're currently on the market properties, right? Um, it'll tell them the average sales price of the homes there, the way, what things are going for, on all the details, of, essentially. So I love this one because like I test things on my mom and literally her reaction was like, oh my gosh, did you see so-and-so's houses on the market, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just because people are nosy. They love to know what's going on in their neighborhood. So you're providing them with this like good juicy bit of gossip information in like the best way possible, right? So this is super easy. Like I said, add it to your contacts. It's set it and forget it as long as they have neighborhoods. Um, if there's currently no properties active in your neighborhood, they, it will not send the email that month. So it's only going to send when there are active properties. So we are seeing a little bit of an issue like right now, just because there's no listings. But this is a super 
easy way to get 12 touches, right? It's going to send once a month. So I can take that 35 minus 12 already. The other smart plans I'm suggesting to get another 12 touches, so to increase your total touch rate, um, is our monthly newsletter. So if you search KWSR, you're going to find all of the smart plans that I create for the agents. So I'm going to do January for an example. The February one is going to be out by February 15th, so we'll be seeing that come out soon. But these newsletters are packed with information, data, um, a fun recipe, a coupon to a local business, um, market info, the you know stats that we have from the last month. So this newsletter is really high value and also not super salesy. It's just educational, informative, kind of fun. So this is a great way to touch your sphere. Um, again, it sends out quickly to all of your contacts and command with just a few clicks. So you can once a month, you know, click one, two, three, four, five, get it sent out. Again, I have other videos for the how to of how to send this, but it's super easy. And if I send out the monthly neighborhood nurture at the beginning of the month, and I send out the newsletter at the middle of the month when it comes out, that's already 24 touches that you have on that entire database without even thinking about it. So those are my two recommendations at the moment. And very soon, literally in the next day or so, you'll also be seeing um, some information come out about one more smart plan. Again, it's not public yet, but it's here in my personal smart plans for me to show you. Just give it a second to load. <laughs> okay. Is this 2022 year long holiday smart plan? So, this one is super generic. It's super easy. Essentially, you're going to set it up to fire on Valentine's Day this year, right? So, you're going to set it up. Um, if it's before Valentine's Day, you'll set a little delay, have it wait as many days as there are until Valentine's Day next week and then it will fire on Valentine's Day. And then from there, you don't have to do another thing. It will literally count out the days between holidays and send emails just with like a cute header on it, uh, you know, happy St. Patrick's Day picture. Um, with some things, there's like a couple little more informational things like for Mother's Day, there's a little graphic about, you know, mothers and how there's all different types of mothers or some people may have lost their mothers for Mother's Day and things like that. So we add on nice little touches. Um, Fourth of July has a recipe, um, just lots of little fun things. And so if you fire it on Valentine's Day, next week, it will fire 12 more times with different holidays throughout the year, just so you're showing up as a nice piece in their inbox on that holiday, um, wishing them a happy holiday. And on a few of them, it's like, hey, like, I really appreciate your referrals, anyone you refer to me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, once this is public, you will be able to go in and look at each of the steps and edit them completely if you want to customize it. Um, but again, if not, if you don't want to customize it, it will put in your agent information there, and then you'll just be able to send it out completely branded to you in a couple of clicks, um, starting on Valentine's Day. And if you use this one as well, that's bringing us up to 36 touches. So we've hit and exceeded the 35 recommended touches that Gary Keller suggests, which is like my all time goal. So I'm super excited about that because then if you do a quarterly call or you post and connect with people on social media or send postcards or do Popeyes, everything else we're gonna talk about today, that's on top of your 35 touches already, right? So we're going to be in front of our people in a really, really strong way. And essentially, if you do this, like I'm pretty much guaranteeing you're going to have some transactions as long as you're like actively trying to get transactions, right? Because we're going to be staying in front of a number of people a lot, right? So if you have your 300 contacts, you're touching them all at least 35 times a year. 
you know, some of those people are going to convert and you're going to get business. So this is a great place to start. There's also, like I said, thousands more smart plans in the library. So just take a look. Um, they have all different options based off of what you need, what you're trying to build. Um, just make sure if you download any agents smart plan that you edit it to not have their contact information and put yours in there. I've seen that happen, not fun. So that is smart plans. Um, before we move on, um, feel free guys to hop off mute if you have questions um, or I will um, monitor the chat as well. So we can drop those in there or ask me pause if I'm talking too fast. Um, I have a question. Um, do you have a recommend smart plan? Let's say um, uh, you would like to get the Facebook link of the client or the contacts. Um, I haven't seen, like there isn't one I necessarily recommend. We can even look. Um, mm -hmm. So if I search like Facebook, um, a lot of them are going, yeah, lead follow-up. That's what I figured <laughs> when you get a Facebook lead. Um, or somewhat like um, making friends or um, getting them friends with us through Facebook. Yeah. So do you mean like uh, getting friends, like people following the business page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the best way, honestly, um, is to kind of maybe include a link at the bottom of other messaging for that, mm -hmm. right? That maybe it's not a designated smart plan, although you definitely could, right? Um, I would say that's just a smart plan email, like one that you just create. That's mm -hmm. like, hey, we have this amazing business page. We share a ton of educational content there. We would love if you give us a follow. Here's the link, right? Um, to kind of grow that page. Um, but then you can also include that little blurb, like follow us on Facebook for more like education and details to see what we're up to and then include the link on the bottom of every email. Like those might be good additions. Okay, got it, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, like my other route is like have your individual agents make more friends on Facebook and then invite them to the business page directly. Um, but that has to be all done on Facebook. Okay. So um, yeah, cause a lot of these emails, I had a feeling these smart plans would be just like follow up after getting a lead. Um, but I can definitely take a look into further detail about that one. Um, awesome. So that's the start of smart plans. Like I said, it's a lot more you can dive into. So just at least start there of knowing that like you have the power to touch your people 35 plus times a year with three smart plans. So super easy. And two of them are literally set it and forget it. And then just one you have to send out each month. So that's a good option there. Now, also in command, we're going to go through the couple of other things. And then I'm going to spend the last half hour talking more about social media. Um, just because it's such a great free option for marketing. But the campaigns tab, so this is the fifth from the bottom tab. There are all sorts of different campaigns, but the one I wanna flag is our paid ads. So if you click to this tab, um, you'll see paid ads. Um, so in my screen, what you're seeing is, you know, we have K-Score, which is um, the new, pre-licensing education that's um, free to people um, through Keller Williams. So I wanted to advertise that on Facebook. You can also advertise on Instagram here, but the value of running paid ads through command is that they're already going to be equal housing compliant. This is one of the biggest things I see with agents who run ads directly through Facebook or through another platform that's not necessarily solely geared toward real estate is that they'll target 50 plus or 55 plus for one of the retirement communities they're trying to advertise to. The problem is this is illegal. 
because housing, even though for that neighborhood, it's 55 plus community, we have to advertise real estate to everyone. Um, that's just part of the equal housing laws. The same thing is like people say, well, I don't want to advertise to people under 18 because who under 18 is going to buy a house. Now that may be the case, but we cannot exclude people younger than 18 um, from that. So running your ad through command is gonna make that immediately compliant. And we can target instead by interest. So if I'm trying to target that 55 plus community, I maybe would highlight retirement planning or um, financial advisor or word, other words that you know people in the retirement age demographic would be more likely to search on the internet, right? Um, so that's how I get pretty granular about targeting with Facebook ads. Um, the other value of running your ad here through command is that the contact or the lead will go directly into your contacts. So there's no moving it over from your Facebook account and potentially missing one and not nurturing it. It literally all goes straight into your contacts. And from here, I can even click these three leads and just add them immediately to some of those smart plan drips that I talked to you about before. So that's one of the biggest values of running your ads directly through command. Now, you may be thinking like, okay, I don't have that big of a marketing budget. I'm not sure about Facebook ads right now. And I have access to over 300 agents here at the office. What's working is the listing ad. So just because there's no listings on the market, obviously when we post about a listing, there's tons and tons of people going, oh, interested, let me see this property that's brand new on the market. So as a new agent, you may not have a listing yourself, um, but you can ask anyone else at the office that has a listing if you can advertise. Um, so this is really big. They have to be another agent here at KW Success Realty. But as long as you ask and they say yes, you can advertise their property and you keep all the leads from that ad that you run. So that's super valuable. I recommend about $30 for 10 days. So it doesn't have to be something super expensive or super crazy. We just wanna make sure we target those interest groups properly to get you some good leads on the property. Right now, our average leads are probably between five and like 40 leads, depending on the property. Um, I would say the average, maybe about eight to 10. So this is going to be a big thing because now you have, you know, five even awesome leads, even if they're cold for you to stick into your contacts, nurture consistently on that 36 touch and grow from there, right? They could become your people and we want to work them as such. So definitely consider running Facebook ads. Um, if you have listings, this would be on my checklist of like, no matter what, if I have a listing, I'm running an ad for it, especially right now in the current market and the current climate. Um, I wouldn't pass up on those leads. Now, of course, maybe as um, with your team, Angelica, they maybe wouldn't want as many buyer leads or they'd be pushing it to a buyer's agent right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also we have lots of agents here at the office who are looking for those buyer leads. So you can definitely push to other people and just get those referral things as well. So it's definitely kind of up to your team. And I know with buyer's agents, you probably share those there. But the thing is like with buyer's clients, okay, a lot of people are like, no, I want the listings right now. <laughs> but we don't know if those potential buyer clients have a listing of their own that we can also get on the market. Or maybe they know grandma is needing to sell in six months, right? So we don't want to pass up on the opportunity of nurturing those buyer leads essentially even if it's like not what we really want right now they can know someone that has what we want or they could become what we want when they see like hey I'm being taken care of like I think I'm actually ready to sell now we have a listing right 
So nurturing all those different types of leads are going to be super important. But again, if your team doesn't want the, as much of the mm -hmm. buyers, you can refer them out and then just get the referral fee, which is um, a good option. So this is the paid ads. Um, Again, it's super easy to connect your Facebook business page to this in command. Um, I can walk you through the steps to actually do that. And for a lot of agents, what I do is I set up the first ad and then they copy, duplicate and edit moving forward. So it's entirely up to you, but that's something you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to do for you. Um, as long as it's within command, I'm not really supposed to be going in your personal Facebooks. So just to cover myself there. All right, so that is paid ads. So again, a great option um, to find yourself more leads and to, if you have a property, advertise your property. And the more ads you run, frankly, the more your face is showing up in front of people and it's brand awareness as well. So definitely consider making, you know, once a month, a $30 ad part of what you do. Um, it's a good, a good option. All right. And then the last thing with marketing that I just want to highlight is the designs tab. Um, so there are all sorts of designs, like you'll see here, I've been editing some covers for some emails that I'm building for the holiday campaign. They have designs like pre-made for so many holidays, things like that. So when you get to this um, designs tab, if you've never made a design before, this will be empty, so no worries. Um, but you'll go up here in the upper right. You may not see the button if you have our faces in the upper right corner. So you might have to move our faces, but you'll click create design and then you choose what type of design you want to create. So sometimes you're making a custom email go out like Angelica for, you know, saying, hey, everyone like and subscribe to our Facebook page. You may create a pretty template um, for an email here in designs. Um, you can do print. So this is flyers, um, you know, little open house brochures. You can build your own, et cetera, et cetera. The video is kind of um, a small thing. It's the neighborhood video. So you can type in the neighborhood like zip code and it will make like a little video that's like, this is what's going on in this neighborhood right now. And people like to post that either just directly on their social media as a little video or send it in an email. So maybe you add it to my monthly newsletter and you send that specifically to a neighborhood you're trying to farm, et cetera. And then the last thing is with social, since we're going to be talking more about social media here in the second half, I'm just going to show you all of the design options that they have for you. Um, with designs. Now you may not have this K score one that's kind of for the office again, but you will definitely have listings. So um, what I like to highlight is like this local expert where you can fill out, get the market data. I believe Jerry had a training recently on InfoSparks and he shows you how to get whatever market data you need for neighborhoods in that class and things like that. So definitely consider watching that recording or joining one of his future ones. But this is all where you can click and edit the design and add your own numbers and post that to social media. The same thing, neighborhood snaps. So we're trying to farm in a specific area. We can add literally neighborhood details and start posting more about that. Here, um, this is just seasonal. So spring selling season, these are sample posts to start getting people you know, excited about selling in the spring and maybe we'll increase those listings. So there's tons and tons of options. So that's for listings. We also have the buyer side where you can advertise Keller Mortgage with some of those types of things. Again, neighborhood snaps of, hey, this is why you wanna move into this area, et cetera. Um, lead generation, what I like to highlight is like client testimonials. So when you get that review on your Google business page, you can, you know, put the text into here, add a picture of your client and post that to your social media. 
there's tons of other ones too. So like inspiration, like these are just like positive quotes that you can share. Um, there's literally a whole tab here on the left that goes by month for holidays. So right now I'd go to February and I can post about Black History Month, the Super Bowl, Groundhog Day, which passed, you know, the year the tiger with the Lunar New Year, um, President's Day, Valentine's Day, like there's all sorts of graphics that you can keep up with the holidays, all sorts of different things like that. So this is great, not as the core of your social media plan, and we'll talk more about social media plans here shortly, but if there's a day where you're like, I just don't know what to post, there's tons of options here. They're really quick to edit. It kind of works like Canva if you've ever used that program, except they're kind of pre-made and tailored things to real estate, which is super valuable. All right, any questions here? I know I've been talking and talking and talking. Um, let's say we create a design um, under this design um, tab. So um, if this will generate a lead, will it automatically be added on the contacts also? Or is it just designed for us to post? It will not get any lead unless it's a paid ad. Yeah, so what will happen is say you made one of the de these designs, you would download it to your computer as an image, right? So it would be a PNG or a JPEG, or um, I guess you could do a PDF, although I don't know if that would help <laughs> too much. Um, you can post that directly on Facebook, um, or you could add it to an email template. So, um, Actually, let me go back. And Pauline, I just want to let you know I'm uh, going to sign off. Um, I'm, I'll just wait for like, you're going to email me the recording, right? Yes, I can do okay, that. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. Absolutely. No worries. Bye-bye now. Bye. Um, so let me show you something. Where did it go? Excuse me while I click around for a second. <laughs> Okay, here. Um, so my email example. So I made these designs here on the bottom as like cover images for the holidays, right? Mm -hmm. But then I made an email design. So a second design, and I'll preview it here. Um, just click on this. So this is an email that I can send out to people and it will like put in the contact's name, and that sort of thing. But you see how I added the image to the email. Mm. So that's one of the valuable things. Let me. It, it will not capture any lead if we use it or if we um, send it to our clients or. Correct. Yeah. Clients. So it's not going to do any lead capture. It's just a picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Like you could take one of the graphics you design here and put it into a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. And now you can run the Facebook ad and capture leads with that. Okay. But if these specifically aren't going to like capture any data for you. All right, got it. Mm -hmm. So that's with the designs. Um, the other design platform, so literally hundreds of more templates is the Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. So we use this um, as the office. So the office pays for this um, for all of the agents here to have access to create different types of print media. Now, Command Designs has some um, prints for like flyers and things like that, but the Michael Lewis Marketing Suite has so many more options, right? You can make business cards, um, door hangers for prospecting a neighborhood, more flyers and property brochures for open houses, um, postcards that you can mail out through the system. So there's just so many more templates, like I'll just click on the jumbo postcards as an example. 
So this would be if you've decided to farm a neighborhood or, you know, send a holiday message to your sphere of influence. You can use any of these templates and like they're all different colors. So I could do prospecting and find, you know, some like data driven ones, which kind of flags to people like, hey, are you ready to sell? Here's an even an open house postcard. Um, so there's just tons and tons of template options. And so this is for, you know, mailing out postcards. The Michael's Marketing Suite will also mail them out for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. You can kind of build it, set it, and it will mail it for you. Um, I do teach a class at the end of the month specifically about how to use this site and edit the graphics and things like that. So consider um, joining that one for more, more of the in-depth of this program. <laughs> And I also talk about at the end of that one, how to use the MLS to pull the mailing list so you don't have to buy a mailing list. All right. Which is a big deal, right? Um, so that is the command and like systems portion. Now, the other thing that we're doing at the office to help you with marketing is the pop by workshops. So it actually, the ordering just closed for our like spring one, which is going to be like a little pot with a shovel and some seeds um, and with a little tag of your choice. Um, but that's something people order, you know, maybe 25 to 50 of those and actually bring them to the homes of the people that they want to keep in the closest relationship with. So maybe that's past clients or just other people you want to stay in their world and do something a little bit more costly, but nice touch, right? Um, so that's something I recommend um, if you can do it once a year to start, especially as a like newer agent, that would be valuable. But just staying in those people's worlds with something like cute and memorable is going to go a long way. So you have the command, mass emails, Facebook ads, designs for social media, et cetera, Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. We want to do postcards to farm our like goal neighborhoods, like the neighborhoods we really want to get into. We'd farm those um, and then pop by to stay with our sphere. Um, the other things that you can do, and I'm just going to rattle some off, is like events, um, sponsoring with a charity, um, doing some sort of community or charity work that you can um, advertise your business with, um, mm -hmm. different um, things like that. And then normally I recommend around the holidays doing a more like personal touch. So I know it's hard for a big team, but something around the holidays of like handwriting some Christmas cards or at least like hand signing Christmas cards, right? Or I know a lot of agents who send you know, the next year's calendar around Christmas or um, the little like fridge magnets with, um, you know, the bear schedule, if you're really into football or even just a little wall calendar, those um, normally are pretty good hits. So those are just things to start thinking about um, as you build like the whole marketing plan, right? Um, <clears throat> So I like those. Any other questions here before we switch gears over to social media? I think that would be it. So it only supports Facebook or less it support Instagram or Twitter also? Um, Command can connect right now with its Facebook and Twitter for scheduling. Yeah. So... Okay. Um, commands able to have you schedule posts to go out on those business pages on your Twitter account, etc. Um, with the Facebook ads manager, it can also connect to Instagram mm -hmm. to like run Instagram ads for you, but there isn't post scheduling, unfortunately, oh. to Instagram. But um, command does link that way. Okay, got it. 
but I will talk about, you know, I think right now, Facebook and Instagram are the two best platforms to be on. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Facebook is going to be typically older generation or, you know, so I would say 25 and older, at least, Mm -hmm. if not 30 and older are going to be more present on Facebook. And then now we're getting the younger generation. So we say 25 and younger, um, being mostly on Instagram. Now, of course, there's some wiggle room because like I'm 26 and I like Instagram better, but (laughs) I'm still on Facebook. Right. Um, Whereas my cousin, who's 19, only has a Facebook because her mom tags her there. (laughs) So we just have to think about who we are talking to um, on these different platforms. Also, what I've noticed is like stay at home moms. um, So typically like young moms, moms with their first baby, that sort of thing. They tend to be more on Instagram as well than other demographics. So it really depends. Like I know Mark really wants to go for the like retirement community, right? Yeah. So for him, I would say a lot of it's going to be driving to Facebook still, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, one, if his demographic, so maybe, you know, 60 plus 70, 80, right? They're going to probably be on Facebook, um, but maybe they're not super active on Facebook, but maybe their adult child who's in their 40s or 50s would be active on Facebook still. Um, Instagram is harder. You'd probably get the grandkids who aren't making decisions for the grandparents, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what you want to think about as like, how much energy are you placing into each platform? Now, would it hurt to, if you're making posts for Facebook to also post them to Instagram? No, because like me, this is just a good example. I'm 26, but my dad is 71. So as a mid twenties person, I'm helping my dad plan his retirement funds. He's okay. Like to my mom's younger, so they're going to keep their house for a while, but he may need to go into assisted living soon because of his health. We don't know. Right. So Mark specifically, if he was on Instagram might reach someone like me, but I'm kind of an oddity, right? (laughs) So he might find the right people as long as he's very confident in his niche on Instagram saying, hey, I'm the retirement specialist. Maybe he's going to say, hey, grandkids, do you know your grandparents need help? Push them to me, right? He's going to talk to the demographic that's on Instagram, but, um, you know, acknowledging that maybe he won't get as much as he would on Facebook because the people making decisions are living on Facebook right now. If that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. I I know it's a little complicated, so we can definitely go into more detail, just like one-on-one. But for the sake of this recording and for the other newbie people, I just want to go through like how I'm setting up Facebook. Um, And then we can pop over to Instagram as well um, to have the best success for my business. And um, excuse any notifications. I have a group thing that's popping up right now um, (laughs) for my other business. Um, But what you'll see here, and as I describe it, um, I'm going to go through my personal um, Facebook and my personal business page for the health coaching um, program that I run. But Anywhere that it says health coach, literally just think realtor, right? Because everything that I'm doing, I've been testing with an online business. So no marketing dollars. I don't spend anything on my marketing. How can I have the biggest presence on social media? So these tips will work for a realtor. You just have to swap in the right details, right? So we'll kind of highlight that there. 
So I'm going to start on the personal Facebook page. So for each of the agents on the Rantis team, um, or for any new person, you're going to want to start on your personal page. And you're going to want to say to yourself, how am I showing up? And do people immediately know that who I am and that I'm in real estate and that I can help them, right? So the first thing is to look at your profile picture. Is it a clear photo of just you? And so you don't want to have a picture of a flower as your profile picture. Or I like to use this as an example, and it's actually why I've kept it. This cover photo, if I did this photo as my profile picture, people could click on me and say, wait, which girl is it? right? If they don't know who I am, if I'm meeting them for the first time on social media, they wouldn't know me from my other roommates. They wouldn't know which girl I was. So that's why it's really important for your profile picture to be a clear, like headshot framed picture of just you. Um, it doesn't have to be a formal like real estate headshot because again, this is your personal page. So it doesn't need to be super businessy, but someone should be able to look at the picture and say, yep, that's Colleen. Um, or with real estate, you're going to be showing up maybe at their house for a listing appointment. You better look like the picture that they looked at on social media. So they're like, yep, that's the right person coming up my driveway. So it's a little bit of safety there as well. So one profile picture. Two, editing this bio. Now, your bio is the first thing that shows up, especially on mobile. So like on your phone, instead of the way you're seeing it here on the desktop, um, that's the first thing people read about you. So for me, because I like to use Instagram, I'm pushing people to Instagram by putting my little username there. Now, if you're mostly doing stuff on Facebook, you don't have to put that there. The next thing is I have my literal job title. So it should say realtor, bam, right there. So they know immediately how you can help them. And then lastly, here, I put a few keywords of reasons why they should like follow me, right? Who am I as a person? So um, like on Instagram, I think I have also like rescue dog mom um, because that's how someone's going to remember me. They're going to be like, oh yeah, Colleen's the one that, you know, she has that rescue husky, but she has a health coaching business. That's the one you want to work with, right? So that's what we want to kind of flag. And maybe this is, you know, mom of five, um, maybe for Mark, this is, you know, your aging real estate specialist. I forget the, the term he uses, um, but you want to tell people like why you're special, why they should connect with you. If you're really into cars, you're know, like car fanatic or bird watcher or whatever it is, right? Because people want to work with who you are as a person, not just your business. So your bio is going to be super important. If you would like, you can add your website. So you can add your Keller Williams website right here. Here's a link to my Instagram, because again, I'm trying to push people there, but you can add any of those links here to your personal profile. You can also, and I normally recommend this, say like your hometown, where you went to high school, where you went to college, because that's gonna help you connect with more people on Facebook that might live in the area and you know might wanna use your services. And then the last thing on the personal page is that you can add a job that you are a realtor at your Facebook business page. So this is where we're gonna talk about the business page on the other side. So once you have your personal page optimized for your real estate business, now you can create that business page or maybe you've already created, but add a link to it. And literally you do this by adding a new job. 
So you say you're a realtor at, and instead of typing Keller Williams Success Realty as your workplace, you're going to put the name of your business page. So whatever you've titled it. So maybe that's, you know, Mark Rantis at the Rantis Group, Keller Williams Success Realty. And that's your business page, right? So the reason I want to do that is because now I have a link on my personal page that they can click. And it will take them immediately to my business page where they can see all of my about info. So now they can definitely find my website. They could find my phone number. They could find my email address. They could connect with me. They could read my bio. Here it's like I've connected my YouTube channel. Everything that they could possibly want to find about me and my business, they're going to find on my business page. So they can see reviews of my business. I haven't pushed for reviews on Facebook, but they could see the services I offer um, and just read all of my about information, maybe message me, et cetera. So that's going to be super important that you add that job on your personal page to make it an easy link over to your business page. And then the reason why you want to have a business page is so that you have a professional presence online on Facebook. So just like your website is a professional presence, if people were to Google your name, your Facebook business page is that vouch that you are a real business on Facebook, right? So not everyone's going to come and want to look at it, but for the people who do see professionalism from the business page, this is super important. We can also only run those Facebook ads that I talked about through command through a business page. So that's the other important thing is we have to connect the business page for that Facebook ad to run. Um, so that is kind of the setup. And again, just like for my personal page, I want to make sure my picture is a clear photo of just me. Um, I'm going to make sure my username accurately describes me and my business. I'm going to make sure all of this about information is accurate and up to date so that when they call, they actually get through to me. I want to make sure just everything functions really well at a really high level. But what you'll see here is I share mostly like my business information here versus when I do share the same things, but then I get tagged in photos. Maybe I share more pictures that are personal to me. You know, I do more of just things for me on my personal page, but on my business page is where I, you know, focus solely on business. So that's the value of the two there. I'm gonna pull Instagram up really quick just to show you mm -hmm. the comparison on Instagram. Yeah, so just like on my Facebook page, I'm posting the same exact things. I am doing reels on face on Instagram just because reels are super valuable right now. But you'll see it's set up the same way. I have the same picture as I do on my business page here so that they see that it's connected and the same thing. Um, I have immediately how I serve people. Um, here, even a call to action, helping create your healthy life. So I'm telling them exactly how I can help them. But then I also have like reasons why they should connect with me, like rescue dog mom, all those things like I did on my personal profile on Facebook. And then of course I have the link to my website. Um, you'll want to include that there as well. But that's going to make sure across your different channels, you are completely branded to your business and you're easy to find and they can tell it's the same business entity or same person, right? So that is the important thing there. Um, I guess the last thing I'll stop sharing is specifically what to post on social media. And what I always start with is um, three posts a week. So if it seems overwhelming to post every day, you don't have to, to have a like decent social media presence. Will it help to post every single day? 
Absolutely, right? The more active I am, the more people see me, the more I'm getting in their world, the more likely they're to reach out to me. But you can do very well with three posts a week as long as you're consistent and you post those three posts every week, in and out, in and out, right? So I always recommend say Monday. So the first post of the week, it's something personal. So it's a picture of me. It's something I did over the weekend, or maybe it's a picture of my messy office desk on the Monday morning. I'm like, oh, I better organize this to get a good jump on the week, right? I'm going to say something that's completely about me, not say LZ at all, like just so they can learn about who I am because they're going to want to work with me because of who I am, not because I work with Keller Williams Success Realty. So share something personal, um, ask a question, um, do all those sorts of things to connect with people. Then the second post of the week, so Wednesday, let's say, is something educational. So maybe this is, um, <clears throat> sorry, I've just been talking this whole time. Um, educational, maybe a video that you shoot and talk about the market. Maybe it's um, a graphic that I've created that talks about, you know, home ownership and mortgage rates and blah, blah, blah. You know, you make that um, post that graphic. Maybe you share a valuable article that people might be interested in that would educate. So anything that's teaching, educating, letting people trust you. And then the last one, so last post of the week is your like salesy post, right? I'm a realtor, call to action. I have an open house this weekend, come to the open house. Um, here's my listing, check it out. Um, client testimonial. So see what people are saying about me. I'd love to work with you. Um, I'm always looking for referrals. Please refer to me, right? We're going to call to action and get people to kind of take action on the business. And if you do that, those three consistently, you'll get a good um, start with engagement and get rolling on social media. So um, it's definitely a good place to start <laughs> if it all seems overwhelming. And then you can post those same pictures on your personal Facebook, on the business page, on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever you want. It's okay for them to be identical because you're going to have different groups of followers on each platform. So it's not going to be like, well, maybe I'd follow Mark on both Facebook and Instagram, so I might see it twice, and that's awesome, um, but likely I'm going to have an entirely different set of audiences on the two, um, so it's okay to just post the same thing, because again, it's just overwhelming and stressful to be like, I need to make this custom content for Facebook and for Instagram, and it's just too much, so all right, that is the basics of the marketing offerings. I know it's a lot. Do you have any questions? So far for uh, social media, not really, because we're not really active in social media. So we're busy right now with our database. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great place to make sure you're touching, getting that a strong yeah. foundation. And then you can go on Facebook and get more leads to add to your database <laughs> once you have your system in place. So that's awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> have a good rest of your day. Same to you. <laughs>